For more insight into China's auto market, we're joined by car expert Lauren Fix, the car coach. She joins us from Buffalo, New York. Lauren, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, the car market in China uh, hit a few bumps in the road earlier this year, but China does remain the world's fastest growing car market. In November, vehicle sales rose 20% as compared to a year earlier. Now, this does come a month after the government slashed a purchase tax on small engine cars from 10 to 5%. Do you think the rebound was mainly driven by that tax incentive, or does it reflect real demand? No, I think that there is a real demand, and the demand is strong, but when the taxes are high, obviously people have a second thought about what to buy. Because of this tax incentive, consumers are, in this case, are going to start looking at minivans and SUVs, and SUV sales for the month of November are up 72%. That's a lot. So that means that they want to have the functionality of being able to transport more people, in the addition, you know, to have something that meets their needs. Because remember, there is also in Beijing, because of the uh, environmental issue uh, of mm. smog, they're having alternate days of driving, so you need to transport more people. Also, uh, Lauren, do you think that the reason why we're seeing an increase in interest for SUVs and minivans is because the relaxing of the one-child policy that perhaps you know, families are growing and we see a lot of uh, you know, grandparents living with, with their children as well uh, that, that a lot of Chinese consumers are thinking, right, instead of getting two cars, let's just get one big car. Do you think that, that the change in policy is having an impact on demand for those larger cars? Absolutely. I think it's also going to have an effect on future sales of automobiles also. So if you're going to have two children and grandparents live with you, then you're transporting six people, maybe even eight people. So you're going to need to get a minivan. And so if you think about those children down the road, when they have children or they get older, again, you're going to have their parents living with them. So the growth of minivans and sport utility vehicles is not over with yet. And you're going to see that continued growth not just amongst the Chinese brands, but amongst the German, the Japanese, and the U.S. brands, too. Well, at the same time, uh, we saw that sales of small engine vehicles also did really well. What's really fueling that trend? Well, obviously, with the sales tax incentive, which only runs to the end of 2016, of allowing 5% tax instead of 10 is actually a great incentive because there's additional incentives, especially from the popular brands such as General Motors and VW. That's a very popular import brand in China. And if there's extra inventory and there's incentives and a 5% sales tax instead of 10, that's going to definitely spur sales. Uh, okay, but at the same time, some analysts are saying that the tax incentive could be definitely good for sales for 2016 because it'll, it'll go on until the end of that year, uh, but it will drag down the market in 2017 and 2018 because it'll push a lot of the demand into 2016. Do you agree with that? I do agree with that. We had the same problem here in the U.S. when they did the cash for clunkers and everyone got excited and got rid of their vehicles, even though they didn't really need to. And then the following two years, the market suffered quite seriously and sales were down. We're finally rebounding from that over the past few years, just slow incremental growth. And you're going to see that same situation occur in the Chinese car market. Now, we've also seen that production has outpaced uh, sales. Uh, according to UBS, there could be about 8 million passenger cars in overcapacity. Should Chinese consumers expect further discounts because of that? Oh, yes, there's going to be a lot of incentives and a lot of great discounts available for the Chinese marketplace. So that will also spur sales in addition. So when you're looking at import brands, especially because they're manufacturing these cars within China, they want to get rid of their inventory. So in order for the next model year to come in, and we're already starting to see 2016s roll in pretty heavily, they need to get rid of anything that's on their lot. It's way too expensive to leave them on there, what they call is floor planning, to let them sit on the lot for the dealers. So for consumers, the benefit is better pricing. You should get a lot more car for your money, and that's excellent for the Chinese market. More car for your money. Everyone likes that. Uh, now, interest yeah. in electric cars uh, jumped after Beijing uh, issued the red alert. Uh, do you think environmental issues like smog um, are becoming a driving force for the growth of the e-market? Well, the e-market is actually down here in the U.S. by 30%, and part of that is because of the cost of fuel. So the cost of fuel is an impact, but also the environmental issue going on in some of the larger cities with smog. So that will be something that will have growth, and the Chinese marketplace is creating their own electric vehicles as well as importing vehicles. And most of the time we're looking at the sales growth is much more dramatic underneath the Chinese brands than it is under the imports. So you're going to start seeing more vehicles that are electric, 
The thing is going to be the same problem we here in, have here in the U.S., and that's infrastructure. Big cities, there's no place to plug in. You've got more cars and less outlets. That always leads to other issues. Other issues, but certainly something that they can work on. Thank you so much. Yes. That was Lauren Thank Fix, you. the car coach.